Hey, how are you doing? And welcome to the Trading Bell Show. Today we have come to at the Retirement Benefits Authority, and we're here to talk to the CEO, Mr. Nzomo Mutuku. He's going to be telling us what is the future holding, especially for the pensioners, and are there good things to look ahead for? Come with me. Mr. Nzomo Mutuku is the Chief Executive Officer of the Retirement Benefits Authority and an ex-officio member of the Board of Directors. Prior to his appointment, Mr. Mutuku had been seconded to the National Treasury and planning as a senior advisor, financial sector, and acting director, financial and sectoral affairs department. Previously, he was the chief manager, research and development at RBA and has worked with RBA since 2000, where he joined from the Central Bank of Kenya. Mr. Mutuku has a wealth of experience in the operations and activities of the financial sector. He has undertaken training in pensions and financial markets in various countries including the UK, Canada and USA at Harvard University and Wharton Business School. He holds a Master's of Arts degree in Economics as well as a First Class Honours Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics and is a Fellow of the Economics Society of Kenya. Thank you so much sir, for joining us and welcome to the Trading Bell. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Uh, well, when people hear about Retirement Benefits Authority, some question, what is this authority about? And maybe I would just want to start on that note of, could you briefly walk us through the authority's mandate to Kenyans? Thank you. Yeah. Um, Retirement Benefits Authority, RBA, mm -hmm. um, is a regulatory body yeah. created by an act of parliament, the Retirement Benefits Act, yeah. uh, which actually passed in 1997 and commenced in 2000. Yeah. So our mandate is, is, is pretty straightforward. We have five things that we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, one, we regulate and supervise pension schemes in Kenya. Yeah. And we have over a thousand schemes that we regulate. Wow. Uh, two, mm -hmm. we protect the interests of the members of those schemes. Mm -hmm. So members are just ordinary Kenyans who are saving for retirement in schemes. Mm -hmm. And we have a mandate to protect um, their interests. Wow. Three, um, mm -hmm. we are there to develop the industry, mm -hmm. make sure more people save for retirement, mm -hmm. try to grow uh, the numbers, the assets of, 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 of the pension industry. Mm -hmm. um, four, um, very important, we also advise government on policy issues yes. to do with, um, uh, with, with retirement okay. and the industry. So we do a lot of research mm -hmm. and we send memorandums to government on policy changes that we think would be good for, for our industry. And the last one is, yeah. of course, like any other government agencies, mm -hmm. we support government in their in their policies. Mm -hmm. So with Vision 2030 is a big for agenda and so on. Uh, we support the government. So that's what RBA is all about. Okay, quite a handful and, you know, matters of retirement are very close to people's hearts. And let me jump straight to how the organization has been doing. Uh, you recently celebrated your 20th anniversary. My question to you would be, what are some of the significant milestones achieved so far in RBA? I think it's been a great 20 years uh, mm -hmm. for RPA and for the industry. Yes. Um, we have seen the assets grow from less than 100 billion uh, shillings mm -hmm. to the current 1.48 trillion that we have as of June 2021. So wow. That's huge growth. Mm -hmm. We have seen the people covered in, in pension arrangements grow from around 12% of the labor force mm -hmm. to 22% uh, currently yeah. um, covered. Mm -hmm. um, over the 20 years also, we have developed a very um, robust pension industry in Kenya yeah. um, with a lot of uh, variety of products. Mm -hmm. For example, we have um, umbrella schemes, we mm -hmm. have individual personal plans which are open to anybody. Yes. Um, we have what we call uh, provident funds, pension mm -hmm. schemes, defined benefit, defined contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, and these schemes are also served by a strong cadre of professionals. Mm -hmm. So we have custodians mm -hmm. uh, who are banks who hold the assets of schemes, mm -hmm. who we register. Um, we have fund managers who yeah. are professional investors mm -hmm. um, who do the investment, who we also register. Mm -hmm. uh, we have administrators mm -hmm. um, who do the day-to-day -day running of the scheme. Okay. Uh, actuaries, I think when, when RBA came, we only had maybe one or two actuaries in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, now we have over 50 qualified actuaries uh, in, the, in the country, mm -hmm. um, accountants, lawyers, and so on. So we have a very um, uh, robust and well-developed pension industry. Okay. And in fact, last year when Alliance did a survey of 
pension industries in Africa, mm -hmm. they ranked us number two uh, behind South Africa in terms of the development of our, of our pension industry. That's number two in Africa? Number two in Africa, correct. Wow, yes. wow. So. Excellent. And I know I want to uh, a little bit dig deeper on that because you've talked about your the contribution and the pension asset growing to, you know, totaling, which said 1.48 trillion. What would you say is the key driver to this growth? Um, the key drivers to the growth, of course, um, are the efforts we have done in terms of getting more people on board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have increased the coverage from 12% to 20%. So more people are saving. Yes. So that will grow the assets. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, um, making sure that those assets are invested in a very uh, stable and, you know, optimal manner. Mm -hmm. uh, and once that happens, then the assets themselves will also um, grow. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the whole framework that you have put in place with the checks and balances, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the custodian, the fund yeah. manager, and so on, uh, board of trustees, it ensures that the assets are safe, mm -hmm. uh, that you don't have leakages from the system. Mm -hmm. So with that kind of robust structure, yeah. uh, we, are, we are definitely going to see a lot of growth, and that's what we have seen over the last 20 years. Absolutely. Let me jump into your investment and, uh, you know, the asset allocation skew in the pension industry has been more towards the fixed income. Um, of course, one would really understand this based on the fact that they are sort of a safe haven and have a better appeal. But, you know, there has been concerns uh, that the trustees or the overseers of these funds might not be maybe at a level or in the capacity to assess other asset classes. I don't know what your view on that is on this. And do you see the high exposure to fixed income as a risk? Um, I don't see it as a risk. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at our asset uh, portfolio, yeah. um, we have around 44% of total assets in, um, in government fixed income securities. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have around 17% um, in equities in the, in the NSC. Yeah. Um, another maybe 16% in what we call guaranteed funds and insurance companies. Yeah. And also around 16% in, um, in, in real estate investments. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that portfolio, it's actually pretty well diversified. In fact, if you compare with most <laughs> African countries, yeah. you find government securities is maybe 70, 80% of, wow. of the total portfolio. But okay. here we're talking of only 44%. Okay. Uh, 44%. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with this diversification, um, you know, pension schemes are, are, are pretty cushioned against shocks from coming mm -hmm. from, uh, from different sides. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a little bit offshore. Um, we have emerging amounts in what we call alternative investments. Yeah. So like private equity, mm -hmm. we have come up from, you know, 500 million, now we are around 2.5 billion shillings, which is in private equity. Yeah. Uh, REITs, mm -hmm. we have amounts there. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we have seen, we have a pretty well um, a diversified um, 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 portfolio. So I okay. think the risks are well managed. And of course, like I mentioned, um, yes, the trustees are the ultimate uh, owners mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the members, mm -hmm. but they use professional fund managers to do the investment. Okay. So the investment is being done by, by the fund managers who are registered by both ourselves and by the Capital Markets Authority. Of course, I would want to also dwell on that because, um, and I love the fact that you've mentioned that even, uh, you know, some of the investments at the NSC and all that, and it's commendable in terms of percentages that you're looking at. But as we go on, as you and we privately had a conversation about this, there are new ways that are coming up, and new investments portfolios, new asset classes as well that are coming up, and even new instruments of trade. Uh, for example, uh, I could talk about the derivatives market, but the NAC. Are you seeing yourselves as well diversifying to these levels? Uh, in fact, the question would be, what's your risk appetite in terms of really looking at these new ways of you know, investing this cash? Um, interestingly, um, this is one case where the regulator is kind of like ahead of the market. Wow. So when you look at our investment guidelines, yeah. you know, they do allow schemes to invest in a mm -hmm. lot of these new things, yeah. though they may not necessarily be in the market yet or schemes may not necessarily have put money there. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we allow derivatives, yeah. uh, which is a new class. Wow. Um, we allow exchange traded funds, mm -hmm. which we only have one in the market, okay. and we have some 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 investment there. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we brought a new category for um, infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, so schemes can invest in infrastructure and support the government in, you know, affordable housing projects or yeah. infrastructure projects through mm -hmm. PPPs like the ones that are coming up. Yeah. Um, so we have these already allowed in um, in our guidelines, mm -hmm. but uh, they have not really been taken up yet because the products are not yet there. Okay. Uh, but we expect the products to come and then yeah. the schemes will be able to, to invest. Okay. Mm. 
Um, some people on the ground sometimes, um, you know, uh, are not satisfied, if I may use that word, with some of the returns they get, uh, you know, from some of the schemes they take up. I, I don't know what would be your comment on them uh, in terms of a regulatory perspective. Um, is it their patience levels that need to grow a little bit more or, you know, from where you see it, what are your, some of your advice to search? I think patience is a long-term business. Yeah. Um, people are you know, saving for many, many years, and then they will get the money uh, much later. Mm -hmm. So one should not be worried about short-term volatility. Okay. You know, when you have a diversified portfolio like this, mm -hmm. things will move up and down. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, if you take the equity market, some yeah. years are good years, mm -hmm. uh, some years are bad years, mm -hmm. uh, or some quarters are good quarters, some quarters are bad quarters. Yeah. But one should not be bothered about that, that, that short-term volatility. I think if you look at what pension schemes have delivered to their members mm -hmm. over 10 years, yeah. um, it's, it's, been a very, it's been a very good return okay. um, and well above uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, just urge members not to worry about short-term issues. Let's look at the long-term because <laughs> pensions is long-term. Mm. All right. That's some hope, definitely, and some lessons there to take home. You know, as an industry as well, definitely have not been spared from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and um, I, I would want to hear from you and how was it for you and you know some of the key lessons that you took out from it yes of course COVID impacted uh, pensions just like the rest of the economy mm -hmm. and other sectors mm -hmm. um, first we had like triple shock um, mm -hmm. which is a bit rare because even when we you know we do what we call stress testing and try to see how resilient our system is yes we anticipate one shock or maybe two shocks, but mm -hmm. now you had three shocks. Mm -hmm. uh, the three shocks were one, um, we had people who lost their jobs and came yes. and took their money out of the system. Because okay. in the Kenyan pension system, yeah. if you lose your job, you can get an amount of the money out. So actually, the majority of what you have saved, you can take it out. Um, so those who um, lost their jobs took their money out, which is a good thing because you know if you have lost your job suddenly, okay. uh, it's good that you have this cushion that your pension can give you. Mm -hmm. um, so it helped them in, in, in in that circumstance. So that was one shock, mm -hmm. uh, money leaving the system. Yeah. Uh, the second shock was on the contribution side. Mm -hmm. um, some employers mm -hmm. um, either you know, stopped business, mm -hmm. uh, sent their workers on unpaid leave, so they didn't retrench them, but they were like on unpaid leave or you know, on less pay and so on. Yeah. So this meant they were not contributing or they were contributing less than what they would normally contribute. Definitely. Like those who had closed, like hotels, mm -hmm. you know, they were not contributing mm -hmm. uh, to, to the pension scheme. Okay. Um, so that was another shock. And then, of course, we had a shock on the investment side because, as we have just said, you know, there's a lot of volatility and we saw the markets uh, impacted uh, when COVID um, um, came. Absolutely. Um, so, yes, it was a difficult time, but um, I think we have now seen uh, a lot of resilience. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the period between... Uh, December 20, mm -hmm. um, let's say December 2019, yeah. and now, mm -hmm. you know, our asset base has come from you know 1.2 something trillion to the 1.48. So yeah. we have still been able to grow. Mm -hmm. So resources our industry is uh, resilient uh, despite um, those shocks. And I think now we are seeing a uh, slow return to normalcy. Uh, some of the people had suspended contributions have come back, and now they are making the full, okay. full contributions. <laughs> All right, you're watching the Trading Bell Show with Mr. Nzomo Mutufu, the CEO, Retirement Benefits Authority. We take a short break. We'll be right back after this.